I'll probably use this again, but no for problem. now. Okay. Okay, here we go. So for this one, you see uh, the numerator's degree is smaller than the denominator's degree. Right? This is a new problem. Okay. Same instructions. So numerator is smaller than denominator. So let's try and factor out the denominator. X plus 2 over. I can factor out an X, can't I? I'll be left with X squared minus 2X plus 1. And can I factor that any further? X squared minus 2X plus 1. Yes. It does factor. It actually factors to be X and then X minus 1, X minus 1 again. Right? So this is the first time we've run into this. I have three linear factors, don't I? But they're not distinct. Two of them are the same. So I have I have to write this this way. Yeah, that, that linear factor squared. That's the same thing, right? Yeah? So this piece right here is a linear factor. And this right here it is quadratic, but I want to call it a repeated linear factor. It's a linear factor that's actually squared, so it's repeated, right? It's repeated in this case twice. It's the same factor twice. And so the question becomes, how do you deal with a repeated linear factor? And here's the method. Do we know what to do with this linear factor? Okay, that one's dead. What do we do? What do we do with this first linear factor that's different from the other ones? Put it underneath, right, as an x, and then put an a on top. How about that? That that's the same as what we've been doing for that one, right? This one we have to do something different. And here's the difference. Because it's 2, right? Because there's a 2 here, there's going to be two fractions I have to include. If this were a three, I would put three additional fractions. If it were a four, I would put four additional fractions. But it's two, so I put twice. Now, underneath here I put x minus one, and underneath this one I put x minus one squared. What if it had been a 3? I would have another fraction, and it would be x minus 1 cubed. So I'd have x minus 1, x minus 1 squared, x minus 1 cubed. Power coming up. Understand? Mm -hmm. All right, on top, b, c. And now we get to play the same game. So we're going to play with this right here. And we are going to multiply both sides by the LCD. But something is going to happen that's a little different than what we've seen before. So without much thought now this time, what does the left side become? Uh, X plus 2. X plus 2. Okay. That's always going to happen. X plus 2 on the left side equals. Now, we're multiplying everything on this side by X. X minus 1 squared x, x minus 1 squared, x, x minus 1 squared, because that's my least common denominator. This is always the least common denominator. This is always it. So it's going to go on the left side and the right side. Okay, what happens on my a term? You have a times x minus 1 squared. Yep, just the x's cancel, right? So you get the a, and then you still have x minus 1 quantity squared. What about on the B? You get an X, and you still have an X minus 1 factor. 
because only one of the x minus one factors cancels. You have a squared one, you have a single one, they, right? You get only one to cancel, so you still leave one there. And on the last one, what do you have? Just x, Just x cx. Okay. Let's see if we can't use the short method here. Can we figure out what A is? In other words, can you kill off B and C at the same time? Yes. Yes. What do you choose? Zero. zero. Right? If I want to figure out what this is, I just need to make this zero, I mean, sorry, this one and this one zero, which means if I choose X to be zero, X to be zero, it should work. And it doesn't kill this off, right? So let X be zero. The, the new equation is what? 2 equals, okay, 0 here, minus 1, squared is 1 times a, so you just get a. And then what about the rest of these? 0, 0, we're gone? We're good? So it's, it's this right here. That a good? All right, let's, tr let's try and get b. Can you get b? No. Why can't you get b? <laughs> yeah, if you're trying to isolate this, then if you try and kill off this one, there's only one way to kill off this one. And that's what? X is 1. But if you put X to be 1, you're going to kill this off. You just can't, can't do it that way, right? All right, so we can't get B. Do you all agree? So let's try and get C. Can we get C? To get C, we just have to kill these two off. Can we? Let X be 1. So we'll be able to get A and C. Let x be 1. And then rewrite the equation. It becomes 3 equals 1 here kills it, 1 here kills it, 1 times C is C. So look, we've got two of the three letters, don't we? But how do you get the last one? How do you get B? Yeah, we could just go in here and replace A with 2 and B and sorry, C with 3, couldn't we? And just see what we have? Right? We could do that. So I'm going to I'm going to um, pause here for a second. That's my little pause button, okay? Let's think about what would, what would the long method have, have produced for us real quick? I say real quick, but because we're starting to become good at this, if we were to do the expansion of the left side, I would get ax squared minus 2ax uh, plus, two, plus a, okay? So that means I would do x minus 1 times x minus 1, right? which would give me x squared minus 2x plus 1, and then I distribute an a to it, right? Here I do x, x squared, x, and then come through with a b. So I would have plus bx squared minus bx, and then my last one plus cx, right? And then if I collected things together, I get x plus 2 equals um, a plus b x squared plus negative 2a minus b plus cx and then plus a. So I've, I've already collected my like terms together and factored out. So I put my x squared, x squared together and pulled the x squared out and left with a plus b. Notice on the x terms, x, x and x, notice I put them all in parentheses, put a plus here and put a negative 2a in the parentheses for that. Notice that? Don't put minus here and then parentheses because then it changes all the signs. So do you all agree that's the same? Yes? Okay, so what I, the thing I'm getting at now is now you can set up your equations. What's your, what are your equations? What do you know that this has to be? Hmm, tricky, we haven't seen that. Well, it has to be, equal, it has to be equivalent to the coefficient on x squared over here. Zero, good. So look, check this out. 
Isn't there a zero x squared here? They don't ever, you don't see it, but it's there, right? So that means that a plus b has to be zero. Negative 2a minus b plus c has to be one. And then a has to be two. Now we already knew what a was, right? Over here, we know what c is. But I'm gonna start writing these equations out. I know that a plus b has to be zero. Why did I leave space there? Yeah, because we have a c in these equations also. So next equation, negative 2a minus b plus c must be one. And then finally, a is two. And do you see, we're, what, what did we not have? What was the one thing we didn't have? We didn't have B. Do you see where we can get B? Yes. B comes from right here. I know what A is, right? A is 2. So if I use this equation right here, I know A is 2. B must be negative 2. So what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that sometimes when you have repeated linear factors, you can't kill everything, you can't kill off everything and leave one thing alone. So you have to, eventually, you have to go to the expansion, the longer method to get to the answers. Any questions? What do y'all think of this so far? Eh. We didn't do this in college algebra. We, did sol we solved systems of equations in college algebra. We did not do partial fraction decomposition in college algebra. Oh, really? OK. Normally, we cover it in the beginning of the semester. But for some reason, I didn't. x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals, or over, sorry, x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1. Mm. On that last problem, our answer was supposed to be a over x plus b over x minus 1 plus c over x minus 1 squared, right? And so you would just come back to here and replace your a, b, and c with your answers, and that's your final answer. That's the decomposition. It broken down. Your answer is not a, b, c. Like, you don't take, write down a is 2, b is this, c is that, box that. No, you rewrite the entire expression with everything replaced and box that answer. All right, anybody see anything here that uh, we haven't dealt with yet? The what? Yeah, the, the numerator is bigger than the denominator, power-wise. And we have not faced this. So, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but our first step now is long division. We start with long division. Once we get through the long division, then we will continue. Can we do synthetic on this one? Can you do synthetic on this? The conditions for synthetic are that the denominator is linear. You have to have a single linear factor to do synthetic division. So there's no way around it. You must do long division first. And we all we all love long division. We all remember how to do this, right? We write the numerator in the division box, right? X to the fourth minus two x squared plus four x plus one. Okay. Look, y'all know how long division's working, right? I mean. The idea is the same idea that you have if you take 11 and divide it by 3. You take your 11 here, 
right? You put three out here and you say, what do I multiply three by to get 11? Well, I can't, right? So you go smaller. So you multiply by three, three and then you multiply three times three and that gives you nine, you put it under here. My daughter is eight years old, she's doing this, right? So this is stuff we've seen, I hope, too. So this is a remainder. This is what she writes, and she has to write in cursive. R or <laughs> two, they make her write in cursive. Really? She had a private school? Private school, yeah. 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 <laughs> so three remainder two, right? OK, that's the way we do it in like old school way. But do, we, do you realize what it really should be when we say remainder two? We, we really put pl plus the remainder over the divisor. That's what it really is. It's three plus two thirds. Okay, now, that's if you have numbers. Variable expressions, it's the same thing. Numerator inside, denominator outside. Make sure that they are both in descending order. That means highest power of x down. And also, I left a space in there. Why? I, a placeholder for my cube, all right? Because I don't have cubes, I don't have cubes in here, but I still need to, be able to have a, a, a column for cubes in case they appear as I do my multiplication. Okay, so what do you do at this point after you rewrite it? What, what's the kind of question you are asking yourself? What times 4x will make 3x? I believe. So Other way around. What times 3x x cubed, x cubed will, will be 4x. So x to the fourth? Yeah, there you go. Sorry. Yeah, no, 3x. <laughs> versus x cubed. I know what you meant, but that you're saying this, so I can't agree with you. I know, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. All right, so <laughs> x cubed. What do you multiply x cubed by to get x to the fourth? x. And I'm going to actually, this doesn't matter, but, but I'm going to line up my x's above where they are here. Okay, x. That's not necessary, but... Okay, so x. And then just like over here, right? 3 goes into 11, how many times 3? So you take that 3, and then you multiply 3 times that, right? And you put it under here. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take this x, and I'm going to multiply it times this. That means x times this. x times that, x times that, x times that. Like distributing, right? It's like you're distributing an x through this. So what's x times this? Uh, four x. x to the fourth. OK, what's x times negative x squared? Negative x to the third. Notice I put it in this column. OK, what's x times negative x? Negative x squared. Negative x squared, lined up with the x squareds. x times 1? Plus, plus x. All right, and then like we did over here, right? 3 times 3 is 9, and then I didn't show it, but what do you do here? Subtract, right? So when you subtract this row, you actually change all the signs and then add straight down. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to change every sign I see. If it's plus, I make it minus. If it's minus, I make it plus. Minus, I make it plus. Plus, I make it minus. And then add down. What's, what's x to the fourth minus x to the fourth? Zero. Zero. That's gone. That's what you wanted to happen. Then what about this? Nothing plus x cubed. Is x cubed? Minus x squared, because negative 2x squared plus an x. And then how about here? Plus 3x, plus 3x and then plus 1. plus 1. Okay. So far, okay? Now, do we continue with long division? Yes. As long as the power out here, x cubed, is not bigger than the power here. And right now, they're the same. So you ask yourself the same question. Continue. What do you multiply x cubed by? to get x cubed? 1. So I'm going to put plus 1 here. And then I'd multiply. 1 through to all that stuff. Just not the x, but the 1. So 1 through to all of those. And what do you get? 1 times x cubed? x cubed. 1 times negative x squared? negative x squared. 1 times uh, negative x? negative x. And then 1 times 1 is 1. And then change all the signs again. If it's plus, it becomes minus. If it's minus plus, minus plus, plus big old minus, so I don't forget what it is. 
and then I add down. It's just 4x? Yeah, yeah. Nice. This is where I stop. Once the power here is smaller than the power here. So to write my final answer, it should be x plus 1 and then cursive r for, I'm just kidding. You don't do cursive r. You do plus, you do plus now, what? Plus the remainder over the divisor. Okay, we all right with this? All right, so we're gonna go back to this now. This right here, what we have determined is that this expression is equivalent to the expression x plus one plus 4x over x cubed minus x squared minus x plus one. Okay, questions so far? Questions so far? We have not done any partial fractions yet. This was just the long division step. So pulling that factor out would replace the entire numerator? Pulling the factor out. We're not, this is not factored out um, because this is not multiplication. We have just rewritten this in a different form, okay? Let me try again to illustrate what we no, have. I know, but I, I want to illustrate it. So we did 11 divided by 3 earlier, right? And we said this was 11, this was 3, it went in there 3 times 9, we subtracted, we had 2. So we say plus 2 thirds, right? Yes? Okay, so what we're saying is that 11 thirds is the same as 3 plus 2 thirds. Right? This is the same as is this right here, right? Yes? Yes. And if you got a common denominator here, what would you have? 9 over 3, and that would be 11 thirds. So it is. So it's just another way of writing the same expression. But the, the key to it is that we've now, we've now created three individual terms. You see how we have three terms? And in calculus, when you have complicated expressions like this, if you can split them up into, into terms that are easier to deal with, then we can do calculus a lot easier. You're just going to have to take my word on that for right now. Well, it's much easier to deal with additions and subtractions in calculus than it is to deal with products and divisions. Much easier. All right. Well, now, we, now what we do is we say, ah, this right here has a smaller degree on top than the bottom now. And that should always happen if you do long division. You should be able to produce something out here that's going to now satisfy what we've had before this example. So I get to now forget all of this and create a new, this is like an, its own little problem now. I'm just going to deal with this, okay? So don't, don't let me forget to come back to our final answer because our final answer needs to have this thrown in front of it. All right. So if this were the only problem you were dealing with, and you were trying to do partial fraction decomposition on this, then what you would want to do is try and factor the denominator. Uh-oh. Everything that we've had up to this point has been something that factors nice. Um, quadratics, right? Pardon? Well, what, how would you deal with this, Zach? Do you, do you remember a way of attacking something if it has four terms instead of three? Grouping. Factoring by grouping. Now, does grouping always work? No. Not always, but it's, it's worth trying. Yeah. So let's see if we can attack this with grouping. And to do that, we kind of split this into two pieces. And you try and factor the first two terms. So is there a GCF out of the first two terms? X squared. X squared. So you, you're just going to rewrite this as x squared pulled out of there, which leaves you with x minus 1. And then what you have to do is see if you can't 
factor something out of here to make it match. I heard it, what? Negative one. Negative one. So you pull out negative one, and then you're left with x minus one again. So let's just double check this. If I multiply here and here, I get back these two. And if I multiply negative one through here and here, I get back these two. So do you all agree with that? Mm -hmm. And then since these two match, what does my next line become? Or my next denominator become? Uh, Minus one, uh, times, uh, yep. X squared minus one times X minus one. one. Right? Now, could I have written it the other way? X minus one times X squared minus one. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. The, never mind. The X squared. Uh, you put X squared minus. Never mind. It's correct. Yeah. Now, I, I can't resist asking the question. Because, because of the response I got, I can't resist but ask the question, why is this equal to that bottom? Why is it? Yeah. Good. Yeah, but like why, why is this? Y'all are telling me that this is equal to x squared minus 1 times x minus 1. It works? Okay. Foil it out and you'll have it. The reason I want to bring this up, I just want to make sure everyone is clear on why this is allowed to go from here to here or there to there. Because it, I think a lot of times it's taught in a way where it's like, okay, once these match, then it's this thing right here and this thing right here in parentheses. And then the thing that matches, just put that in parentheses and that's what it is. Without any like real understanding as to why it's that. So if you understand it, great. But if you don't, and you've just learned it more as like a, like a process, let me just try and illustrate. If I wrote down x squared, or yeah, x squared times m minus 1 times m, then what's the GCF there? What's the greatest common factor? M, you could pull an m out, right? And if I pulled an m out, I would have m x squared minus 1, wouldn't I? Yeah. OK, that's exactly what this is right here. It's x squared times m, so m is this whole thing right here, minus 1 times m, <clears throat> right? And so you're pulling the m out, which would be what? If I pull the m out, what would it be? X minus, x minus 1, and then what would be left? X squared, x squared minus 1. That's what's happening. If that makes sense to you, great. If it doesn't, I'm not sure what else I can show you right now. And if you don't care, then just remember it the way you remember it, all right? But you're pulling out a greatest common factor. That's what's happening. You're pulling out this greatest common factor out. And it becomes this, which is equivalent to this. With that said, let's get back to this. All right. I have factored the denominator? Or have I? I still can go more, can't I? Because this is difference of squares x squared minus 1 is the same as x plus 1 times x minus 1? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is the same as 4x over x plus 1 times x minus 1. But what did I already have there? I still had an, I had an x minus 1 there already, didn't I? Yeah. So I actually have two of them squared. And we are finally to our point of partial fractions. What do I have there in that denominator? We have two linear factors. They're distinct, but one of them's repeated, yeah. right? So let's see. How many fractions am I going to make out of this? Three. Three. One for this first one. Put A up there. X minus one here. I didn't need that parentheses, but it's no harm in putting it, right? It's not going to hurt anyone. There you go. And then you'd follow through with the same procedure we just did. All right, I only have eight minutes. I'm not going to continue this problem. Don't you stop. Dot, dot, dot. Don't. 
But remember, whatever you get from this, right, you're going to find an A and a B and a C, right? And then this answer gets put right there, okay? And you still have X plus 1 in front of it. That would be your final re rewriting of this, all right? X plus 1 plus those three fractions. Well, the system of equations will do, yeah. So do you have to write a program for that, or is it already inside the calculator? It's, people it, told me it, that you like write it depends it. on what uh, calculator you have, but most of the TIs will do the, the system of equations, most of them. I mean, you have to be like TI-83, I think, doesn't. So like 84 and up, 84 plus, and I don't know. I have not seen one that doesn't do it in a while. It's been some time since I've seen one that doesn't. <coughs> this is our last one. <coughs> last one for the day. Okay, take a look. Do I need to do long division? I do not need long division because I have a power on the bottom that's bigger than the top, so I, I can keep going. Um, can you factor the denominator? Yes? Okay, so we have 2x squared minus x plus 4. You can pull a GCF out. That's about it, right? Yeah. You get x and then x squared plus 4. You can't do this. Everybody? It's the first time we've seen this. Every problem that I've done so far, the denominator is linear factors. Now, it might be repeated, right? But they're all linear factors. I cannot break this down, can I? Because it's not a minus. If it was a minus, I could. But I can't. So this is the first time we've seen this. This right here is a linear factor. We already knew that. And this right here, I don't know what the language that the book uses for this, but shouldn't we use what you see in calculus anyway? Irreducible quadratic. In other words, it is a quadratic factor that can't be factored. It's irreducible. You cannot reduce that into two linear factors. Right? If it was x squared minus 4, we could reduce it, couldn't we? Into two pieces. But that's a quadratic that cannot be factored, and therefore it's irreducible. Um, yeah, I mean, yes. Minus four. Yeah, you could say that. There's no way I can ever add a number to four after I square that number and get zero. This is not possible. Okay, so how do we handle irreducible quadratics? Well, we know what we do with x, don't we? What do I do with the x? This this linear factor. What do I put over here? X and on the top. A. Okay, so that's good, right? Now, for my irreducible quadratic factors, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the irreducible quadratic factor into the denominator. And I only have one of them, right? It's only to the first power, so I only have one. So I'm only going to have one of them here also. But here's the big change. Instead of putting B over that, I put... bx plus c. It's okay. I don't mean to pick on you. Okay, now, oh, well, now, you might be sitting there going, what the heck just happened, right? Okay, so I want you to think about this. When we've had linear factors on the bottom, linear factors, we've always been putting a number on top, right? Okay, what is the power 
of a linear factor. What's the highest power of x of a linear factor? One. If you have a constant by itself, what's the power of x? If it's not there, it's a zero. So imagine that this is really like x to the zero sitting next to that. Because anything to the zero is a one. So you could argue that the denominator has degree one, and therefore you put a degree zero on top. Make kind of sense? So if you have a quadratic on the bottom, you will place a linear on top. And if you were to have a cubic on the bottom, you would put a quadratic on the top. And if you had a fourth degree, you'd put third degree, and so on and so forth. Now, we won't go there. And we don't even go there in Cal 2. We don't go past quadratics in Cal 2 either. But that's the concept, is that you want, you want the derivative, ah, you, you want the derivative, sorry. You want the denominator to be one power higher than the numerator. Or you could say you want the numerator to be one power less than the denominator. Why, Diego? <laughs> because the denominator is going to turn out to be u. And the derivative of that will be one power less. So you'll have, the you'll have u on the bottom and the derivative on top. And then you can let u be natural log. And it's, it works. So Diego vis visits us from time to time from my Cal 3 class just for fun, I guess. And uh, so I'm picking on him today. What's that? Yeah, he's a tutor in the math lab. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's refreshing himself. So that's what you do. Every time you see a quadratic, you place a linear on top. And then you play the same game. You try and get the numerators to match up, or you try and cancel things out. So do I have time? No, I don't. What would you multiply both sides by here? Let's do I know. I want to go, you want to go, but let me just at least write what the next line would be. OK, so what would it be? I get the numerator on the left side, right? And then what about my next piece? A? A over x squared plus 4. x squared plus 4, and then plus bx plus c, that whole thing, times x. That would be my next line. Now, you cannot kill, you cannot kill this off ever. I can never kill this off. Because I can't ever play, replace x with something that's going to make this 0. You are going to be forced to do the long method here. All right? But it can be worked out. And this is where we'll pick up next class. We'll continue doing some irreducible quadratics. And then we're going to put them all together where we have like linear factors distinct with repeated with quadratics that are repeated and non. You get it, right? Bring your calculators next time. They are handy. Could only help. <laughs> the the TI-89, if you type the expression in, it will do the partial fraction decomposition for you. Oh, yeah? Oh, I thought he was talking to me. Go ahead. Yes, I'm going there right now. If you want your test, I'm going into my office.